the truth is those are not real tangible truths those are just stories you're telling yourself and there are other opportunities around you to find the things that you need hello and welcome to the business of happiness podcast i'm your host dr taryn mccarthy and We are in a new location. We are in a temporary location, but I like it. I like it. I'm feeling this right now. I'm at a lake, beautiful lake. You're seeing me here in my shed. (laughs) I set up my temporary podcast studio. Let me tell you, you make it work no matter what, right? And this is exciting. I'm feeling the vibe of this new location. Thank you so much for joining us on our last episode interviewing Michael DeLuca, fascinating, fascinating human being and what incredible, interesting experiences he's gone through. But I think the message that resonated with me most is that we can come back Anytime we stumble, there's a way to come back from crisis. So if you haven't listened to that episode, please check out the last episode with Michael DeLuca on coming back after the COVID crisis. And today, I want to welcome our newest members to the Business of Happiness Hive. This is just turning into such a great community on the private Facebook group called the Business of Happiness Hive. Check us out over there. Please ask to join. We'd love you to be there with us as we talk about all things success in business and in life. And welcome to Keith and Gabby and Gwen and Erica and Narob and Jackie and Maureen and Anne Marie. So excited to have you there. And I look forward to getting to know you better and to supporting you in your dream for success and rewriting your definition of success in your business and in your life. Today, we're doing exactly that with today's topic of the top five things you need to stop doing in order to realize your dreams. I know, I don't usually go negative on you here, but honestly, today we're going to be talking about what are those five things that we need to stop? These are things that I've learned over time, maybe the hard way. Things that were holding me back from realizing my dream. You know, it's one thing when you imagine what you want in a business or a career or any other kind of a dream that you have for yourself, and you start putting things in place to realize that dream, and yet there are some obstacles that just are getting in your way, preventing you from seeing ultimate success or even feeling good about it, which really is integral to finding that success in your dream. Because we know that only when you feel good can you do good. I believe that so deeply. You have to feel great about it, especially if it's something that's taking a lot of your effort, a lot of motivation, a lot of action on your part. The most important aspect of that is feeling good about it. So what are those five big interrupters? What are the five things that you absolutely have to stop doing in order to realize your dream? Number one, and this is the most difficult one. This was the one that I found the most difficult to do in my own life. And when I finally did it, things really started moving. What it is is, You have to stop negative relationships. Toxic relationships in your life are the ultimate dream killer. And this is so hard because we end up with so many people around us that have been supporters of us, but maybe in the wrong way. This is the question I'd love for you to ask yourself. Are your colleagues or friends or sometimes family members actually supporting you in courageous and encouraging ways? Or are they just enabling you in a place where you are right now that isn't your dream? You know, we sometimes create friendships and support circles around misery. And we think that that feels comforting. And and maybe in the moment it does. And maybe there are opportunities for you to at least be honest and vulnerable with your truth when you're in pain, when you're with these people. But have they turned into 
support for you to just stay stuck where you are. You know, saying goodbye to good friends is very painful. And you don't have to say goodbye 100%. But when you look around the room at the people that you're spending most of your time with, are they people who are sucking you from your dreams and wanting you to stay in this place of misery? That happened to me. It was extremely painful for me to put some friendships to the side when I realized that every time I was around this group of friends, I felt bad about myself. I wasn't recognizing the beauty and the excitement and the dream that was bubbling up inside of me when I was with them. All we were talking about was commiserating over negative things. This happens a lot when we reach out to friends and we want to say, hey, this stumbling block has happened to me. I'm feeling uncomfortable about this. I made this mistake. What advice do you have? The advice that you get should be empowering should be supportive for growth and learning. It shouldn't be commiserating about negativity and blame and making everything seem like it just is always going to be negative. That's very disempowering. It doesn't make you feel like you've got power in any situation. It makes you feel like a victim. So number one, Number one, most important thing to stop doing when you're chasing after a new dream, stop setting yourself up for failure around friendships who expect failure from you. Woo, that's a big one. Number two, stop negative self-talk. So just like you don't want to be around friends who are talking about negative aspects of your life and making you feel stuck in a negative situation. You also don't want that friend inside your head doing the same thing. In fact, this one's almost more poisonous. Now, here's the permission I'm going to give you. It's very difficult to suddenly stop negative self-talk, especially if you've been doing it for 20, 30, 40, maybe 60 years. If that's what you've been so used to your whole life is constantly giving yourself negative self-talk and blaming yourself and pointing out your weaknesses, then it's going to be very difficult to just do overnight. So here is the tip I have for you on how to stop negative self-talk. Awareness. That's it. It's as simple as just being aware. If you just can start listening to that voice whenever it creeps up and just give yourself an air of curiosity, isn't that interesting? And I promise you that these little moments will add up to being able to see them for what they are, which is always, always a lie. It's very similar to the idea of happiness. You know, people say to me all the time, you can't be happy all the time. And they're right. You can't be happy all the time. But when you seek to be a little happier all the time, when that's your intention all the time, these moments of happiness knit themselves together to find happier overall, to find a more joyful outlook on life. I promise you, I promise, telling you from my own experience. You know, many people have said to me in the past, well, you're, you're just always happy. You just were born that way. And, you know, that's not true. And the same is true for negative self-talk. It's not true that I've never had negative self-talk. I have it all the time. But I started to just be aware of it. I started to just listen to that voice and recognize it not as a defining voice of who I am, but really a story that maybe I've heard, maybe I told myself, maybe I inherited, maybe I got from social media, but it's just a story and it actually has no validity or truth in my life. So when I started to just be aware of the negative self-talk, now I could separate myself from it just a little bit. And believe me, it's a practice. But the more you do, the stronger that practice becomes. And of course, we're always going to have negative self-talk creeping in. But becoming aware of it gives you back your power over it. So that was number two, stopping negative self-talk. The third one, stop striving for perfection. 
Oh, this is another one that hits me hard. And, you know, I hate saying that I'm a perfectionist. You know, I think I've heard myself say that in the past, and many people say that. And I think perfectionism is such poison to ourselves. I have nothing against somebody else who wants to be a perfectionist, but I know for me in my world, it is poison. And I also know that it stops and prevents ultimate success especially when it comes to our dreams, because there is no such thing as perfection. The thing about perfection is it actually limits you. Because if you have an idea of what a perfect, I don't know, what would be a great dream to think about? Let's say you want, you're dreaming of writing a book, dreaming of authoring a novel, and you think well, it has to be perfect. You will never get to the point where your perfectionism is actually reached. That novel will never be perfect because that doesn't exist. So your novel will never get published. You know, many people say, well, I'm going to wait to have children until the timing is perfect. And we've all learned from that that that's not a thing either. There's no such thing as a perfect time to have children. There's no such thing as a perfect time to get married. There's no such thing as a perfect time to start a business. There's no such thing as a perfect time to start on your journey of happiness. Perfect doesn't exist. And when you try to be perfect, you just introduce procrastination because you put it off and you put it off and you put it off. So the number three top thing that you have to stop doing in order to achieve your dreams is stop trying to make it perfect because you'll never get started and even worse it will never be the beautiful thing that it needs to be have you ever started something and thought well I'm not going to try to judge it I'm just going to let it be and then it turns into something even more beautiful than you thought it should be than you thought it could be I mean I don't know if any of you have ever done any painting I am not an exceptional artist by any stretch of the imagination. But when I forced myself or imagined a certain outcome for artistry for myself with painting, I've always felt limited and the result is never satisfying. But when I let myself just go and come what may, something beautiful always comes out of it because I don't have this expectation for the outcome. So that was number three, let go of perfectionism. Number four, stop forcing the hand of time. Man, this is another one that I learned the hard way and I still struggle with. We all want the results now, now, now. I think this is a function of our society. Just things come so easily to us in Western society, you know. When you want something to eat, you can find it in a heartbeat. When you want some light, you turn on the light switch. You can always rely on the electricity. You know, many of my friends back home in South Africa know that sometimes you need patience. <laughs> Your expectations can't always be fulfilled on a whim. We learned this during the COVID lockdown when we couldn't find olive oil. Do you remember that? It seems so f long ago, but we were reminded of that lesson again, that everything doesn't happen in an instant. So why should success, why should your dreams happen in an instant? In fact, if they happened in an instant, you'd be unprepared. You know, I recently was talking to someone about this, about my first orthodontic practice. It was a disaster. It was, it was a disaster. It was a failure. Now, looking back at it, I don't think it was that much of a failure. I actually did a lot of wonderful, great things. But the timing of it was I kept forcing the timing of it. If it hadn't failed, I wouldn't have learned all the beautiful things that I've learned in the progress, and I wouldn't be where I am today. I had to give myself this time of growth. Even in my business at the moment, you know, I think back my part, business partner and I, we wanted so badly to be busy right away. And I was speaking to a client recently and he said the same thing to me. He said, you know, I just want to be busy. I want to be busy now. I don't want to wait. I want to be busy now. And the interesting thing is sometimes we would not be prepared if the success came too soon. 
Have you seen something like that in your own life? Have you ever looked back and thought, well, I'm so glad that that love of my life didn't come 10 years ago because I would not have been prepared for it? Or even as a parent, I'm so glad that that didn't happen five years ago because I was not in the right place for it at that time. The same is true for our dreams, being patient along the way. And you know that phrase that is such a cliche, but it comes to mind right away. It's about the journey and not the destination. I know you've heard that, but it really is true because along the journey, we're earning all the knowledge that we need in order to truly appreciate the beautiful success on the other hand. So stop trying to force the hand of time. Just be patient with it. And sometimes people will say to me, you know, I can't be patient. I need the money now, or I need the happiness now, or I need the success now. And the truth is, those are not real, tangible truths. Those are just stories you're telling yourself. And there are other opportunities around you to find the things that you need. There are other opportunities to look at this a little bit differently. If you can just take yourself out of that pressure of time for a heartbeat and see the progress that you're making and trust in the dream, trust in the vision. It will come, but what else do you need to do to give you what you need in this moment? So that was number four, stop trying to force the hand of time. And number five, stop thinking your dream is selfish. Mm. This is a big one. I think so many of us think, you know, this is so unrealistic. I think this is so selfish that my dream really isn't deserving, right? Look at other people's dreams. They seem so altruistic. They seem so philanthropic. They have great purpose. They have great stories to tell. They have great reasons for seeking out their dreams. So the number five most important thing to stop doing when you're seeking out your dream is to stop thinking that it's selfish. What if you realizing your dream was the one thing that the people around you needed to see. When I'm talking about the people around you, I mean, it could be your family, it could be your friends, it could be your community, it could be your country. It could be as little, as, sm as big as you can imagine, but what if your dreams were the ultimate, most important thing to someone around you? If you pursuing this dream, you know, each one of us is so unique and has such incredible, unique talents. And if at any one point, any one of us thought, well, this is selfish, I'm not gonna try this. I'm gonna just keep giving and giving and giving and never answering this calling that I feel inside of me. So many of us would lose out if that incredible author didn't write that book, if that incredible Artist didn't write that screenplay or that beautiful piece of music. Can you put yourself in her shoes for a moment and see how at one point he or she thought that might be selfish? You know, holding yourself up in an apartment for days on end to paint a beautiful piece of art that sounds very selfish. But imagine now the impact it has on the world around you. Imagine if your pursuit of your dream was meant to touch so many people, inspire or give or uplift people around you. If you felt like it was too selfish to pursue, it would never happen. So that number five thing to stop doing is to stop feeling like your dream is selfish. I promise you, the world needs the gifts that you have to give. And I have a bonus one for you. Here's my bonus number six. The sixth thing you need to stop doing, stop comparing yourself to others. This is a dream killer because the moment we start judging ourselves based on other people, we start to strip ourselves of our strength and of our willpower and of our motivation and of our complete magnificence to be able to realize our dreams. 
when you you can't compare yourself to other people. You are not somebody else. And that's the magic of your dream is your dream is not somebody else's. You know, I hear this a lot in the coaching and personal development world where people say, well, there's already so many people doing this. You know, why am I going to do this? It's funny. I don't hear that in dentistry. I don't hear dentists saying, well, we've already got a dime a dozen dentists. So why am I going to even think about or dream about being a dentist. But for some reason in the personal development world, we hear this a lot. Well, there's so many coaches out there. There's so many life coaches and business coaches. Why should I be special? The truth is you can't compare yourself to anyone else. You're already special. You already are just because of who you are. No one else has lived your life. No one else has thought your thoughts. Nobody else can see this beautiful dream inside of you. So stop comparing yourself because you are unlike everybody else. So there you go. If you've ever needed permission to pursue your dreams, let this be it, my friend. Please know that the world is waiting for you to lift up your own power and to see your dreams through to fruition. Because without you and your special gifts, we'd never know that unique flavor of success that you have to give this world. And we know that when you feel good, you can do good. So trust in yourself and stop doing those six things that are preventing you from delivering your very best self to this world and for, from feeling your very best self in this world. I believe in you. Bye-bye.